In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to create a custom pod for an Adobe Connect 8 meeting room. Custom pods are created with the Adobe Flex framework, so it's going to require a little bit of flex knowledge to be able to build a custom pod. This is actually the first part of a two-part tutorial series here. In the second video, I'm going to show you how to use Flash uh, in ActionScript 3 to make a custom pod using a little bit of a flex wrapper that you won't have to edit. So in this first tutorial, we'll just kind of show what's needed to get set up. The first thing that we're going to need to do is download the Collaboration Builder SDK. And this is a set of libraries, some help files, and a couple source uh, sample projects for getting started. Once you download the SDK and unzip it, you'll end up with a folder uh, with some uh, sample folders in here. We got sample applications and example code, uh, the libraries, which we'll talk about shortly, the help files, and then a getting started PDF. I want to make one mention. I'm not going to get too deep into the API here to be programming with, but in the help files, if you open up the index page, this is going to be very similar to an action script documentation that you may be familiar with uh, where you can look at the sync connector and all the API calls that you can do all the events that you can listen for there's quite a bit built in um, to the API here so uh, be aware of that uh, use that as a resource but as I said I'm not going to get too much into the actual language itself so the main part of the SDK are the libraries that come along with it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Flash Builder and you could be using Flash Builder 3.5, 4 or 4.5 for this. Uh, any version of Flash Builder will actually work. I'm going to create a new Flex project. I'm going to call this project Part 1. It's going to be a web application and here is the important part. You need to be using the Flex 3.5 SDK. Now I only have 3.6 because I'm using Flash Builder 4.5. Uh, for the most part it should work in Flex 3.6 as well uh, as long as you're using the Flex 3 framework. There, You can actually install the 3.5 framework but for the purpose of this tutorial I'm just going to stick with the Flex 3.6 framework. I'm going to hit finish to just create my project. I'm not going to worry about any of the other settings. This will generate the project files and create a uh, part1.mxml application. Now the next step here is to take the libraries that I need uh, in order to uh, work with the SDK. So what I'm going to take is the connection emulator and the sync connector. Those two SWIC files and I'm going to copy those and paste them into my libs directory of my flex project. This is so I can work with those libraries. Notice I didn't take that last SWIC file, the service emulator. You could bring that along, but you actually don't need it. The last part of my setup is that I'm going to go into the sample apps folder, the output folder, and I'm going to copy this service emulator app and just paste it in my source file. Remember, we're building a custom pod that's going to synchronize with other custom pods in the Connect Meeting Room, and I don't want to have to keep putting this into an Adobe Connect Room in order to test it. Uh, so what they've done with the SDK is they've given you the ability to be able to simulate a synchronous connection. And that's the point of this service emulator app. Um, this SWF just has to be running for you to be able to, to simulate a Connect Meeting Room. We'll see how this works once we get started. Now in my file there are two important pieces that we need. The first thing is I'm going to add a sync connector component and connection emulator component. These two components are what are required in order to not only send messages back and forth between the custom pods but also maintain a connection to the meeting room. I'm going to give my sync connector an ID of connector and I'm going to set the bsync connector property of my connection emulator. I'm going to bind it to the connector so that, again, when it connects to the meeting room, it has an object to be able to send and receive messages through. On the note of sending and receiving, the sync connector is going to receive sync messages. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an event. I'm also going to generate the event handler. This is a great feature of Flash Builder 4.5. Once the handler is generated, I'm going to say the function name is sync message received. And in this function, then, we can handle what happens to a sync message. So let's hold that just for a little bit. Before I can really test anything, I'm going to want to have something in my user interface. Now this is just a little bit of uh, a little bit of information about setting up a custom pod. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give my application a width of 100% and a height of 100%. So it'll scale perfectly to the size of the pod that it's sitting in in Adobe Connect. The other thing, just for the heck of it, I'm going to give it a background color, 0x, F, 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 F. Now I'm going to start adding some user interface elements. I'm going to add a panel. I'm going to give the panel a title of chat. And I'm going to use constraints to set this. I'm going to set the top to 5, the right 5, bottom to 5, and the left. I could just put padding on the application, or I could put my application into, um, you know, an absolute layout of, or a, a, a vertical or horizontal layout. But one of the things that we want is we want this to look nice and tight in that pod. So the application is going to scale. Its background color is going to go wall to wall in wherever it's sitting, and then I can have a subcomponent like a panel or a V box or another canvas where I can put my content and make sure everything stays sync. Uh, uh, positioned how I want it. Now in here I'm just going to end it with a text area ID of log, a width of 100% and a height of 100%. Below the text area I'm going to put an HBox with a text input component with an ID input and a width of 100% and a button. Label of submit and on click generate a click handler called send message. Final thing is I need to make sure my layout of my panel is vertical. So I'm going to save this file. I'm going to test it real quick just to see what my UI looks like. When it pops up you'll see that I have a place where I can type something. I have a submit button that I can hit and there's a text area at the top uh, right now where you can input it, which I don't want, um, but ideally I type in here and it submits it. It makes a little chat log so I can be chatting with someone else in the Connect meeting room. I'm going to fix just a couple things in the interface. My text area, editable, false. HBox that has my content in it here. I'm going to give this a width of 100%. Now I'm ready to add the syncing part of my custom pod. Now I'm going to make a function up at the top here, update log, which is going to get sent a message. And all it's going to do with that message is tell the log.text to plus equal message plus a new line. So it's just going to keep adding items into that message. My send message function, which gets called when I hit submit, is going to call that update log function and pass it input.text. So in other words, whatever's typed in that input. Now if I again test this, I'm not syncing or anything yet, but just testing kind of the local functionality here. If I type in hello and I hit submit, I should see it show up there. If I type in what's up and I hit submit, I see it go on the next line. So I've got my kind of chat functionality working here. This needs to be sent to all the other custom pods. And that's where my connector comes into play. Right after I update the log, what I'm going to do is tell the connector to dispatch a sync message. Now the way sync messages work, you'll notice from the code hinting here, is that you send a message name. I'm going to make a message called update. This can be called whatever you want. You just have to catch it on the other end by the same name. The second parameter is what do you want to send? I'm going to send input.text. 
My final parameter is a Boolean variable called is delta. I'm going to put true for this. What this means is if somebody joins the room late, by putting true in this in this spot, that means that they will receive every single message up to that point, which you would want in the case of a chat log. You'd want them to see all the previous history. If you put false in here and somebody joins the room late or uh, re resets their room or refreshes it, they're only going to see any messages from that point forward. So it's a nice way to be able to queue up your messages if you need to. That will be sending out through the connection all the messages that I want to dispatch. I just have to catch them. This function is going to get called anytime there's a message received. I'm going to put an if statement in here. I'm going to say if the event dot data dot msgnm message name equals equals update so if I get an update message then I'm going to update log with event dot data dot msgval message value and that's whatever you sent here so you can see it's kind of loosely typed here I can kind of send whatever I want and the other tricky thing to think about is this is the same file that everyone has loaded up so yes it's handling its own sync message calls and that's because it has to it's the same one that's that's happening everywhere so this should dispatch a message this will catch it and update my log and the problem here is I can't test this because I'm not in a connect meeting room. So before I run it this time, I'm going to double click on my connection or my service emulator app. Again, this is just a headless sort of flash file that's just running. So I'm going to move that off my, my other monitor here. I'm going to run this project. And then all I'm going to do is uh, add this URL in a new browser. In Internet Explorer, you can just hit Control N to create a new browser window and it uses the same URL by default. So in this one window I'm going to type in hello, hit submit, you'll see it show up here and you'll see it show up in that other room. If I come to this room, hey, and hit submit, it's going to appear in this. It's synchronizing the messages between both clients. Uh, and that's pretty cool that I can test that locally. Notice you can't tell who said what, so it would actually be kind of cool if I sent the name of the person, colon, and then what they typed. So one extra piece, uh, I'm going to, in my send message function, just add a variable for um, custom message. It's going to be a string. I'm going to have it equal connector dot, now notice all the methods. These are all the methods that are documented in those help files. You can see there's methods for their role, if they're a host, presenter, there's all sorts of things that I can do. You'll see that there's also a username. So I'm going to use the connector.username. I'm going to append on a colon and append on input.text. That's what I want to update here and what I want to send in my sync message. Now I've still got this emulator running. I'm going to actually close this down so I get a brand new session, rerun it. I'm then going to run two copies of my application and send a message which you can see shows up as just user 2. If I come here, send a message, shows up as user 1. And that's because I'm not in a real meeting room. It's just simulating that data, which is fine. The final step in this process is to publish out our application and load it into a SharePod in the Connect Meeting Room. Now to do this, you'll want to comment out the connection emulator because we don't need to, we don't need to emulate our connection. We don't need to simulate anything because we're going to have it in a Connect Meeting Room. I'm going to export a release build from Flash Builder. This is just useful because it decreases the file size of the SWF and strips out all the debugging information that we don't need. When the export is complete, you will end up with your SWF file and you can add this into a SharePod in a Connect 8 meeting room. Hopefully this gets you enough to get started building custom pods. 
Part 2 will show you how to do some similar things, but with Flash and ActionScript 3, for those of you who don't know Flex.